Um, good morning. Today I want to show you how to design a corset. A corset is very specific to fitting. Fitting is very important, so a proper fit can assist you with a proper garment at the end of the day and a successful garment. The most important measurements is the ribcage measurement. The ribcage measurement is plus minus on a standard size 12, 8 cm below the higher breast point. The higher breast point is your second very important mark that you must indicate properly on a corset when you design it. The rib cage, as I said, is eight centimeter below the higher breast point. And then to determine your style line, it all depends on your design. If your design do have a sweetheart neckline, it's also on a size 12, approximately eight centimeters above the higher breast point. This is a mark that can change. It all depends on your figure type, as well as the ribcage measurement. If it's a big busted lady, the ribcage measurement will differ. So it's something that you had to measure on the figure before you start with your design. How to eliminate the extra fullness around your body, your bust circumference. That is the measurement underneath the bust, excluding the dart and right up to center front, center front, as well as over the blade to center back. Now, this is a measurement that already do have a lot of ease. So we must take away the ease by adding a second dart. As we call it in pattern design, you double your dart. You measure your standard dart there, and the same measurement to the left side, you draw a new dot to absorb the extra fullness on the basic pattern. This is a basic block front, and this is a basic block back. So on the front, we double the dot. That means twice the amount of the standard dot to the left hand side, and then combine it with your higher breast point. At the back, you eliminate the fullness by adding 0.5 cm to the outside of your dart, draw a straight line up to the blade, and the same at the other side. Two straight lines. Now, you eliminate extra fullness here. Can you see from the one line to the other line is the extra fullness that you're going to take away so that this corset can have a proper fit. A corset is a top without any straps and it's very, very, very close fitted. And then you can also take away one centimeter underneath the armpit or the sky and you face it into the waistline going back onto your hip line. The reason why we go back onto the hip line is because on the hip line, you don't want to take away extra fullness because you wear either a pair of pants or a skirt underneath and that will take up some of your fullness. That's why we don't go right through one, point or one centimeter or 1.5 centimeter. Then the same on the front. You start with one centimeter in the sky or on the underarm and you face it in onto the hip line. The back dot I enlarge with 0.5 and 0.5. The same apply to the front dot. You take, make it bigger and then on the rib cage. You go with a 0.5, a little bit bigger on the rib cage because you must fit very closely there and back to 0.5. And then as I explained previously, we don't take away fullness on the hip line below the waist. You shape it in to the hip line of the pattern. If you want that long, your corset is that long. If your corset is shorter, I will address it just now. Now you, I just repeat quickly, higher breast point, very important. 
Rib cage measurement very important on the front. It's normally eight centimeter below. You can determine it by measure from the higher breast point to your rib cage. It's where your bra normally fits. And then the same to the top. You indicate eight centimeter on the left hand side and measure eight centimeter on the right hand side. The reason why you must measure it to determine the exact length both sides Otherwise, when you start with your construction, it won't fit. The seam allowance won't fit. The one can be longer than the other one, or it can be shorter than the other one. Very important. Then you draw in your shape of your corset. I prefer for the sweetheart shape. There you are. On center front, you are allowed to take off 0.5 centimeter for extra better fit to make it more tight. I prefer not to do it, but you can do it if you want to. I normally face it in from just below the waistline to the sweetheart neckline. Then you can cut away this. This is like a little suppression that you do on center front. Now this will become even more tighter. You must just remember we work on half of the pattern. So this will be eventually one centimeter on full scale when you work on a full pattern. So you can't really go wider. I know that some of the uh, textbooks say you can go up to a centimeter. If you, if you do have a concern how to determine when to decide and when not, is take your measurement of your client from the higher breast point to her center front, to the center front. So it's from the higher breast point to the center front. And that measurement you can apply here. Then that gives you a little bit of an idea what to take away here, more or less or nothing. Okay. Then we go to the back and we measure our back. I drop 0.5 there. Now I must drop 0.5 here as well. Then I draw in my style line and I measure again, it's 18 centimeters, uh, 17 and a half, 17 and a half, and then I go to the other side, 17 and a half, and then very important is to drop on center back. You must drop on center back and this last centimeter must be straight. So if you're not sure how to get it straight, take your ruler, a 90 degrees corner, and it's straight. From there on, it go up and it go into the style line. The reason why we drop here, otherwise you create a pointy back instead of a fluent line to center back. This is very, very important. So you must drop it. It must be lower. You can see if I place my ruler here, I drop to this last centimeter and the last centimeter must be straight to prevent a pointy back. The same will apply on the center back here and the same will apply on the center back front here. It all depends on your design, but on center back, it never go up. It never go up. So be very, make very sure that it's one centimeter lower than your underarm point to prevent it from a terrible line. Fine. Now we go to the bottom of the corset. Again, you determine it there, and then you go on to center front, also one centimeter straight. You can take your ruler, your square ruler, place it in position, and make sure that it is a one centimeter straight and then a 90 degrees corner. Now I want to design the shape of the corset at the back. Very important again. We must measure from the underarm there, from your new stitching line or fitting line, that's that one, follow my finger, up to where that one is. Say for instance, this is 25, 30 centimeters. This one is... Uh, it's 29 centimeters. Not bad for guessing. Then this one must be 29 centimeters as well. Eventually, 
the side seam of the front and the side seam of the back must be joined in construction. That's the reason why this and that must be exactly the same. Then you can draw in your style line. Uh, you're not your style line, your hemline, sorry. And here, I can't draw over an open line. That's a rule. You never draw over an open dot. You can't because you can't determine. Now you take the distance from there up to there and you apply it on the other side as well. And you always work from the waistline down. Can you see? There's a description C. The reason why is the shape. That's the reason why. It's a concurve and a convex. And that's the reason why you must. And again, a 90 degree corner, a 90 degree corner, a 90 degree corner. Then we combine this line going in up to there. You combine this line to give space to the, I can just draw it a little bit better. Especially this one. to support the space that you need for the skirt or the pan or the denim or what else. There you are. Now your basic corset is completed. Then very important center front must be indicated and it's placed on fold. So you follow your center front line and you do your place on fold, grain line, There you are, this is placed on fold, the grain line. The grain line is always parallel to center front. That's why I use my ruler, place it on my new center front because I change it a little bit there to accommodate the extra tightness of this um, corset. I draw it in. Then I indicate parallel to center front on the side panel front my grain line, it's very important that the grain line is always the length of the pattern. The reason for this is when you lay out and cut, and it's a short grain line, you can't lay out accurate according to the grain line of the fabric. In patterns, when we do um, corsets, I only indicate the grain line with an arrow facing the top of the pattern. The reason why, when you do an arrow this side as normal, then when you lay out and cut and you start to construct, the students use the pattern upside down and then you get a distort shape. So very important, the arrow must be to the front, uh, to, the, to the top of the pattern, sorry. And then the same on center back, a grain line, full length of the pattern, with the arrow facing the top of the pattern. Then we determine the grain line on the other side, the side panel of the corset. All the grain lines must be parallel to center front and center back. There you are also with an arrow to this side. As I said, I just rephrase to make sure that when you start with your construction you join the patterns properly not the top of the pattern at the uh, hip line and the hip line of the pattern at the top that happened I promise you it happened so please draw a line like this keep your pattern onto your fabric so that you know when I start to join it during construction that I'm joining it the correct way check before you cut out the checking points is make sure your rib cage measurement, you add a little bit extra, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 there. It can be 0 0.6 if the person do have a very, very, very narrow, small waistline. On the hip lines, you stay exactly where you are to accommodate the skirt. The higher breast point is very important. So when we cut out now, if we check everything and make sure all my, this style line and that style line, correspond in length because we're going to join it. Then we cut it out 
and you cut it out on the stitching line or the fitting line. That's the position where I'm cutting now. This pattern is a basic block pattern and it is without any seam allowance. When you lay out and cut, you add your seam allowance. I'm going over the waistline and to my armpit or sky position. There you are. And then we cut on the style line. The reason why I cut it out now is just to show you when you go in practice that this point can't be a sharp point because a bust is not a sharp point. It's not a sharp point. You must just trim it a little bit to accommodate the roundness of a bust. I can promise you, if you design a corset using this method, that's not in the textbooks, it will fit 101% to the client and it won't fall off and it will stay on the body without a strap and, and, and. When you go to construction, you're going to add boning to assist with the with this stiffness of the uh, corset as well as violin, but that is another lesson. So the same, taking off the dart here, There's your front panel, corset front panel, corset side panel front. And please label your designs, corset side panel front, center front panel corset. And then we go to the back. The back is exactly the same as the front. When we lay out and cut, we add on 1.5 centimeters all around, except on center front, because center front is placed on fold. Then on center back, you add four centimeter. The reason why we add four centimeter on center back, that is center back, is to accommodate the fly part of the fastness. On a blouse, you've got a button stand. On a corset, you've got a fly, to go in underneath during construction. So you add four centimeters there, and then you lay out and you cut, and you've got a perfect corset. Add 1.5 centimeters all around, except on center back, you add four centimeters, and the reason why this is a fly, like when you wear a pair of pants, there's a fly underneath, and this is exactly the same this piece, that extra four centimeter, is for your fly and for your ruler loops to fasten up when you do the construction. Thank you. <laughs>